It's a people business. We're interacting with people. Why can't we capitalize on that with these positive reviews? Because that, that's what we're selling. We're not selling properties. We're creating relationships and we're putting people in the right places. So I, I think a conversation with a vendor who you've already worked with or who you're trying to set up an appraisal with, they will understand that you're trying to grow their business and they'll be more than happy to leave you a review based on your authenticity and, and your advice. You're listening to Elevate, the official podcast of elite agent for real estate industry sales professionals, property managers, and leaders. With thanks to our partner, Connect Now, Elevate brings you the best tools, thinking, and strategies to elevate your results. To download your written action guide from this podcast containing extra tips, links, and shortcuts, visit EliteAgentElevate.com. And for more information about how Connect Now can make moving easier on your clients, Visit connectnow.com.au. Here is your host, Samantha McLean. Welcome to another episode of the Elevate Podcast, where we delve into some of the most interesting minds in business and in real estate for the very best tips and strategies for you to implement to elevate your business. I'm Samantha McLean, editor of Elite Agent and host of today's show. On today's show, I'm joined by Podium Regional Sales Director, Sean Smith with a background in real estate that includes property management support and also some time with realestate.com.au, Sean's current focus involves helping agencies obtain and manage their online reviews, which is very important. So welcome to the show, Sean. Thank you, Samantha. Great to be here. That was a mouthful. Welcome to the show, Sean. (laughs) There's, There's a bit of alliteration going on there. So let's dive straight in and talk online reviews. And we always hear about the importance of reviews. Why do they matter so much to an agent's online reputation? It depends when you're talking about online reviews, what the purpose of it is for an agency. If they're just using reviews as a way to get some nice testimonials that they want to put on their website, that's great, but it doesn't drive new business. So when I think of reviews and and the reason I've come over into this space and I'm so passionate about reviews specifically in the real estate sector is that reviews mean business. Landlords, vendors looking at online reviews, they're only looking there for one reason, and that's to see who the next agency is that they appoint to either manage their property or sell their property. Yeah, it's almost that last check, isn't it? Because you do your research and you jump in and you jump out and you do all sorts of other things as a consumer. And then finally, before you make that selection, you go and look at the reviews, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it it, it could be the difference even between, you know, someone being referred over to a great agent, that person still might check those reviews and they might get turned off, even if it's their best friend's recommendation. Yeah, it's an interesting topic. But reviews aren't just about reputation, they're all about search engine optimization as well. So can you talk us through how that works exactly? So great question, Sam. I'd encourage everyone listening to this when you get to a, a desktop computer or a, a mobile search best real estate agency, and then put in the suburb of your agency. You're not just looking there at agencies that have a couple of reviews. You're looking at the most recommended agencies in that area. And that's tied down to around about eight or nine out of the the 10 SEO factors with Google are purely tied to those reviews, whether they're recent reviews, whether you consistently and, and frequently get those reviews, and also your star rating and your total number as well. But they're not the be all and end all. Yeah, that's interesting. So Google is actually ranking people based on recency of reviews and based on the number of reviews. And I also take it the velocity of reviews, like how many reviews have come in over a certain period of time. Absolutely. And that in Google's eyes, that comes down to they want to make sure that this isn't just a flash in the pan for an office. So if an office is 10 reviews in and then they go, you know what, this is really important. We're going to add an extra 100 reviews in the next week. We're going to ask all of our clients. That might look good in your number of reviews and your star rating, but Google's not going to look super favorably on that because it's not part of your process. If you're looking at reviews as a a new business strategy, for instance, make it part of every process, make it part of the selling journey, make it part of the the tenant journey as well. Finding a property after they sign a lease and they've secured that premise, ask them for a review and it will just happen day in, day out. Yeah, that's interesting. And I want to get to asking for reviews because Podium does that exceptionally well. We just talked a lot about Google, but there are a whole lot of review platforms for agents, rate my agent, realestate.com.au, Facebook, et cetera. In your opinion, where should agents focus? I think it depends a lot on what they're trying to achieve with each of these different review platforms. 
I'm very biased uh, because Google has actually backed Podium. <laughs> so I, I, I'm not necessarily the best voice to, to get involved in which platform. I would always encourage people to find out where their customers are finding them from. I know that some of those review sites, they're focused on buyers and tenants. We know where they're going though. If they're looking for a property, reviews probably aren't going to really influence them if they're looking to buy or lease a property. But Google is the first point of call. So if someone's doing the research on, like I say, a, a landlord or a vendor doing their research on the agency that they're going to enlist, not the agent, the agency and the brand, that's where Google is absolutely the number one place because it's tied into your phone, it's tied into your web browser, you see it straight away and you can see who is the most recommended agency in that area. So what mistakes do you see? Because asking for reviews is difficult at the moment. I mean, if I'm an agent, I probably am asking for reviews on multiple different platforms from one customer. And it gets a bit awkward because it's like, oh, can you give us a testimonial? Here's my video. Can, do you mind saying a few words for my camera? Also, we're over on Facebook. Please give us a five star. It starts getting a bit tricky. What mistakes do you see agents making when it comes to asking for reviews? Yeah, I, I would coin that review fatigue. I've heard that in, in a number of different areas. Again, it, it goes back to where the biggest bang for your buck is. I feel if you make it easy for someone, they will be more willing to do multiple reviews, but maybe you do it at different stages of the journey. So when someone purchases a property, you ask the buyers for a, a rate my agent review. When the leasing department leases a property, you ask them for a Facebook recommendation. And then when on the other side, like the new business side, like I mentioned, a vendor or a landlord, so a vendor who sells their property at settlement, ask them for a Google review and then ask the landlord for a Google review as well because those are the ones that are going to attract much of the much of the same coming through as well. Yeah, so what is a good way to ask for reviews? And I don't mind if you refer to Podium as well here because you can just say to the vendor, look, please leave me a review on Google or you could email them, but... I read some statistic lately where we get 122 emails a day, more if your email address is samantha at eliteagent.com, but, <laughs> but the average punter gets about 150 emails a day. What do you think is the most efficient way to get a result when asking for a review? I think we, we would be hard-pressed to find a better platform than text messaging. It's been around for long enough that everyone knows how to do it. It's simple. We have a saying at Podium that convenience wins. If we can make it convenient for an agency and, and all their staff to actually ask for those reviews and not add an, an extra burden to their day. But then on the other side, we can make it incredibly easy for their clients to leave that feedback as well. It's going to happen. And like I said, it's, it's just going to be part of that process. So I, I'm the same as you, Sam. I've, I've got, I think it's just glancing at my phone, 1,800 unread emails at the moment in my personal account. I'm not going to get to them. And if you're asking me for a favor, which an online review is asking for a favor, we've provided a great service. We're just asking for that little favor now that's going to help us grow our business further. I'm not going to see it if you send me an email. But if you send me a text, unfortunately, I've got one text message waiting. And out of respect for Samantha McLean, I will not be checking that until this podcast recording is finished. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. So the, the text message gets sent. And then if you're going to email a Google review, like we've done it a few times, please leave us a review on Google if you enjoyed one of our courses or whatever it is that we do. But it's really hard to capture that URL from Google. It's like about a metre long and looks really ugly in an email. So how do you get around that with the whole You can actually do it just straight from your text message, can't you? Yeah, exactly. Not to... to push a product too heavily, but that's what Podium realized back in 2014. It's not a simple process. Even if you really try and you create repeatable processes around it, there's a lot of manual work that has to go into it. And that's why typically if you're in the property industry and you're looking at other agencies near you, you're probably seeing a lot that have great reputations, but they actually don't have that translated onto Google because they haven't found a way to actually make it easy. So that's what Podium helps with. So creating really repeatable processes. I mentioned we are backed by Google, so we can actually make that side of things very convenient and, and just easy so that it happens in the background without you needing, needing to give it too much um, attention day to day. I reckon that's, it's a great point, actually, that we should be embedding asking for a review into our systems and processes the same way that we embed client nurture programs and things like that. I, absolutely. I, I was speaking with that agency the other day and I actually asked them, like, what percentage of your everyday life in real estate is transacting a property? 
Okay. And, and I'm not talking about an Alexander Phillips who, you know, transacts 220 properties every year. I'm talking a typical agency in a regional area, right? And they said probably three, maybe 4% of their actual time is transacting. So that means 90, 96 to 97% of their day to day is people. It's a people business. We're interacting with people. Why can't we capitalize on that with these positive reviews? Because that, that's what we're selling. We're not selling properties. We're creating relationships and we're putting people in the right places. So I, I think a conversation with a vendor who you've already worked with or who you're trying to set up an appraisal with, they will understand that you're trying to grow their business and they'll be more than happy to leave you a review based on your authenticity and, and your advice. Yeah. What about negative reviews? Because I know like you, you're in the business of reviews. And so it's interesting because we hear stories every now and then of agents doing terrible things like leaving competitors, bad reviews, and look every now and then you're going to get some sort of a a steamer from a customer who wasn't happy. (laughs) What can agents do about negative reviews? I hear the word negative reviews and I, I put a, a dollar sign next to it and I, it screams opportunity. I'm going to like come right out, and, right out and say it. Most negative reviews for real estate agencies, yes, some of them are competitive agencies like you mentioned and that's unfortunate. Most of them are buyers uh, who feel like they've been hard done by through the process and tenants who've had their bond withheld at some part of the, the property cycle, or like usually justifiably. And if I'm a landlord or if I'm a vendor doing my research on an agency, as long as I see that agency and as long as they come up in the searches and they've got a great review process that gets them in that window, I see a negative review. As long as I see a response that acknowledges that situation, creates a bit of empathy around it as well, I actually see that as a great trust factor. Firstly, if I'm a landlord, I'm seeing that, the, the managing agent is actually going to put their foot down and they're going to fight for me and, and work in my best interest to protect my investment. And the same thing with the vendor as well. They're fighting to get the best price and in the quickest time frame for my property as well. So I think the only reason negative reviews are a, an actual negative is if it's a negative review on a business that only has a two-star rating and is not showing on Google as a result of those negative. Yeah, so if it's the odd negative review that has been responded to thoughtfully, let's just say, because I do believe too that negative reviews give you an opportunity to be better, then that's not necessarily a negative. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We, we can always turn that into an opportunity to either turn that person around or show everyone else what we're all about. Yeah. And then I guess too, you could just go and get a heap more positive. Re- it's actually, because we're dealing in averages here, if you've got one review and it's a negative review, then that's not a great star rating, but if you've got five reviews and one bad one, then you could easily go out and get 10 or 20 other reviews. It's just another reminder to keep up the work. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as long as, like we keep saying, as long as we make this part of the process, negatives are going to come in, whether we we're proactive about it or not. It's just that at the moment, usually they're, they're just organic and we're not proactively asking for everything else. So some people might be wondering about this podium thing, and I guess we better talk a little bit about it because it does make getting those reviews easy. Can you walk us through the software and what it does? Yeah, so I guess that uh, we've touched on the why, the podium. Our founder, he um, worked at his dad's tire shop in Canada who had a, an absolutely glowing reputation in the local area. However, when Google you know, decided to actually preference reviews as the driving factor behind local search, they were nowhere. So the tool was created for that unique purpose. And we realized pretty quickly that every local business across the globe deals with the same issue. Okay, So what we do is capitalize on, like we, we said, text message being the absolute most preferred way to communicate from B to C and from B to B as well. So Podium makes it easy to request these reviews through text message. So it's available to our clients over the phone. So you've got an app so that if you're out of the office doing inspections, you can ask for reviews, but it's also at the desktop as well. So if you're a tenant since to sign a lease, you've got Podium there ready to go on your web browser. So you're just sending a text, capitalizing with that review while the iron's hot as well, because timing is very important with all of this. So you're not always just on your phone. You can actually be sitting at your desk and but it's just a text messaging platform that you can use from your computer as well. 
Absolutely. And critically on that, it's a two-way text messaging system too. So even after that review has been sent out and we've essentially capitalized on that interaction, that client, when they need to, they can text you back. They can ask questions. They can you know, get in touch with you about referrals and you can keep that conversation going as well. A lot of businesses in the real estate space, they do text their clients from time to time. A lot of the time though, and, and I'd say in, in most cases, it's from a CRM and it's just a one-way text message whereas Podium has two-way capabilities. So it, it's actually turning into what we now call an interaction management platform. So reviews are just one core part of that, that overall strategy. If I was to get a text message from the Podium platform, I could actually reply saying, hey, who dis or whatever, and it would just come straight back into the messaging platform to be responded to. Exactly. And then whoever needs to be notified about that, they'll see that lovely review that Samantha's just sent through. It needs to be passed to someone else to say thank you. They can actually manage that within the office as well, yet it's only coming from one number within the business. Now, I noticed my hairdresser was using Podium the other day. I went to book an appointment and I noticed a little Podium thing pop up. It said to me, when are you looking for an appointment? And so I typed in, it was just like a text message that I wouldn't mind Wednesday or Friday. And then it came back to me with a message and a few times that I could possibly select to go to the hairdressers, which I thought was super efficient. And it seems to me like that would have a great application in an agency office as well. So tell us about how two-way text messaging can work that, you know, is perhaps like a little bit better than just the usual chat three dots that often come up and takes a long time. Question for you, Sam. When was it that you actually requested that information from the hairdresser? What time of day was that? It was actually early in the morning because I get up early to do the newsletter and stuff. So it would have been like before business hours, which is why I was on the website. Exactly. So at that time, you wouldn't have called because it would have been inconvenience. Nobody would have answered. <laughs> and and no if answer. you emailed, you'd probably still be waiting for that appointment booking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, that's why two-way text works. So what we do from a website is enable absolute convenience. So for Sam looking to book her hairdressing appointment in, if she might be commuting into work, she might be whatever the circumstances are when she can't necessarily pick up the phone or send an email, text message is the, the best way for her to actually engage and start that conversation with the business around a booking. It, with real estate, it's no different. So a vendor doing their research late at night while they're also watching Netflix, but they're browsing, they're browsing for the next selling agent. They don't want to call. And I know some will. I know some people listening will be saying, hey, I, I get calls. I get texts at 11 o'clock at night. I know it happens. But most people are respectful and they will acknowledge that no one's probably around. But if I can start the conversation through text message and take that conversation back to my phone. All I'm waiting on is a text message. I'm not waiting online at, on a live chat system. I'm not waiting for an email response. I'm just waiting for a text back. Yeah. Like in my experience, the text just came back that said, this is a text message. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. And it was like, oh, okay. Like acknowledged. It was almost like receiving that copy that will get back to you shortly. Exactly. And that's the thing. You run a very successful business your days are jam-packed with meetings after meetings. So that convenience for you allowed you to actually continue about your day. And again, to take it back to a real estate setting, our vendors, our landlords, they run businesses. They have back-to-back -back appointments. They are busy people. We know that as soon as they start that conversation, life happens. And if we're relying on them to wait on a computer or send an email, we're, we're probably missing a lot of opportunities by not making that convenient at the start. And just, just to, to expand on that as well, we know how many agencies are actually fighting for those listings. So even if you are one of those top three on Google who gets through from the reviews, you're still up against other people in that appraisal. So if you've booked in your appraisal ahead of everyone else by 24 hours and you're actually getting in there first because you were available through text, you're already ahead of the game. Well, that's it. And if you're a good closer, then if you're in there first, the beauty contest may not continue. And that's the thing, we can't help with closing, but we can get you in the window. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So in Australia, what sort of agencies are currently using the platform? It's pretty broad, to be honest. We work with over 80,000 businesses in total across the US, Canada and Australia, and across all industries as well. So real estate is actually one of the, the most emerging areas or sub verticals within Podium that we're working on at the moment. So we're working with about 250 agencies. And that's anywhere from we've got one boutique group that's 40 offices 
and one office in WA that's just one person. So it doesn't really matter the, the profile of the agency. It's more about them having a mindset of wanting to grow their business and reflecting what their reputation is all about in the online world. Yeah, absolutely, which is so important. It's it's actually really cool that even, you know, if you're just a, a small agency or even an agent out there on your own, that you can use these sorts of tools because it makes you look like the big guys. Absolutely, absolutely. They're, again, in most areas, you'll see three businesses on Google. Most agencies I talk to will be upset because, Firstly, they're not on there, which we obviously can help with. But most of the time they'll say, oh, those three, like they don't do anything. So I don't know why they're up there. And I'll say, hey, they are putting their best foot forward. They're getting reviews from their happy clients. And as you say, Sam, like they are making themselves look bigger, which is great for consumers. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Digital, for the ability to do that. So where to from here? What are the plans for Podium over the coming months? So we're, we're very ambitious, as you might have already noticed. We are obviously expanding the, the real estate pretty drastically. Product-wise, we're adding on the ability to actually grab feedback from agencies as well, or should I say agencies providing or grabbing that feedback from their clients. So an NPS-style tool, again, goes through text message, it's automated, it gets that feedback, it provides actionable insights into why you're not winning those listings, or why you're losing those managements or why you're doing really well and, and creating happy clients for life who you can then ask for referrals from. The next one is actually promotional messaging. Every agency I work with has a, a huge database of clients. So this then provides them an SMS marketing platform to you know, put the message out there about incentives for referrals or brand new properties that they've just listed in an area. But again, it's not a one-way text just saying, hey, do not reply. I'm just letting you know this. It's inviting a conversation and starting new connections with people. That's on the product front, on the sort of partnership. And we're, we're really trying to ingrain ourselves within the property industry. Coming from REA, I'm, I'm very passionate about not just setting podium up in Australia in general, but really getting knees deep in the, the real estate sector because that's a, a big passion of mine. So we've actually just partnered with MarketBuy, uh, the online offer management system, and we're actually powering their support through text message for all of the agencies that they work with. So really enabling them to scale their support and do more with a lot less. Well, Sean, it's been amazing having a bit of a chat to you about reviews and stuff like that because it is literally a topic that's close to the heart of many agents and many small businesses around the place. Do you have a final piece of advice for agents looking to master the landscape of online reviews or one thing that you would like them to remember? It's easy. It's very easy. A lot of agencies think that it's hard. They need to replace systems. They need to update processes. I'll take my podium hat off for a, for a moment and just say, this can be worked into every existing process that you have within the business. And it's natural to ask for reviews because you do a great service. Obviously, then adding on a platform like Podium, it just automates the process and ensures that you actually capitalize rather than asking and, and not necessarily receiving. But I think a great takeaway is just look at all those processes and see the awesome opportunity that we all have. Yeah, amazing. Sean Smith, thank you so much. Thanks, Sam. Great to chat. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Elevate with thanks to connectnow.com.au. Don't forget to download your written action guide from this podcast containing extra tips, links and shortcuts. Visit EliteAgentElevate.com.